Good. Oh, y'all dirty. Y'all were dirty. Good afternoon, y'all, and welcome to Rhode Island. The weather, not so great. So when you guys saw us get here in the last video, it was 83 degrees out, and we went to the swimming pool. As you can see right now, I'm wearing a hoodie. It went from 83 degrees the first day we were here to now today, Sunday. We got here on a Friday. It's 53 degrees today. Look what the rain and the pollen did to my truck. It's unfortunate that I, my truck was washed off looking good, but now look at it. Still shiny, but it's really yellow. This truck is not really black at all. Nice yellow truck. The RV doesn't look much better. So it's been raining the entire time we've been here. We got done swimming. We didn't get rained out swimming, but as soon as we got back and got showered, it started raining. It rained all day Saturday, and today, Sunday, it's not raining. It doesn't look great though. There are moments where the sun breaks through the clouds, like right there, and it looks pretty nice out, but it's pretty cloudy. There's a 50% chance of rain or more the rest of the time we're gonna be here. So today is the day we have to get our adventuring done. And we're heading over to Portsmouth, Portsmouth, Portsmouth. Not sure how you say it. I'm sure the S is silent. Portsmouth, Rhode Island. It's time for another giveaway. This month, we've partnered up with Roy Powell Batteries again to give away a lithium battery for your RV. Now, the first time around, they gave us a 100 amp hour lithium battery, and it was such a success that this month, they're doubling down. They're gonna be giving away a 200 amp hour lithium battery for your RV. Now, if you want more information on the battery, check the link in the description below. And as always, if you wanna get entered to win your very own 200 amp hour battery from Roy Powell, head over to pavenewfast.com and get yourself some merch. Like this shirt right here, this good morning. Anything from our merchandise store gets you to win your very own battery. So head over right now and get yourself entered. Ashton, what do you see in front of us? That, and I don't know what it is. What else is in front of us? What do you think we're going to do that involves trains and that thing that you don't know what it is? I don't know. Kayla, what do you think we're doing? Trains. Okay. We're doing trains? Yeah. Well, trains is a hint. We are going to do something with trains. Yeah, and I don't know what the red thing is. Yeah, no one knows what the red thing is yet. Do you know what the red thing is? I do. Oh, so you <laughs> cheated. The red thing needs a roof. <laughs> <laughs> so we got raindrops. <laughs> it's not supposed to rain today. Today was the only day it's not supposed to rain. I told Kevin, uh, it's so windy. I hope we're going with the wind. And he says, well, we have to get back on the same track. So, <laughs> so maybe the wind will turn around with us because this isn't looking promising. Hey Bubba, what do you think we're doing today? Look at this train right here. Choo choo. What do you think about this train, buddy? So, have you guys figured out what we're doing? It involves the train tracks, but it doesn't involve the train. We're doing this rail cart exploring in Rhode Island. We tried to do it in Cape May, New Jersey, but it was closed. Wouldn't close, it was sold out the days that we could do it. So there they are. We get on these little rail cars and we get to pedal, I think like six miles. We get to go see like the Rhode Island Bay area by rail car. Are y'all ready? Do I get all those instructions? I heard, what arm do we raise when we break? Well, he said right, but he raised left. <laughs> <laughs> are y'all ready? Ready. Caden lifts up every time I pedal. Girls, let's go. Hey y'all! Just getting our afternoon workout in. Let's see how fast we can make it go. Y'all wanna go fast? <laughs> You're being a woo girl!
update. Caden needs a snack. <laughs> Kayla may or may not have fallen asleep already. <laughs> Ashlyn keeps yelling, go faster. And she wants to touch the pedal. She's trying so hard. We didn't push her seat up that far enough. We keep getting demands to go faster. I don't think she realized how much work we're doing back here. No, when we go fast, it really feels like I'm trying to sprint. <laughs> I can barely see the people behind us. I can't see anyone in front of us. I guess they'll tell us when we stop. I guess they're also <laughs> sprinting on there. <laughs> Caleb, is this fun? Ashlyn, is this fun? Put your hands up, let's go fast. It's getting tough out here. Surely we're almost to the end. The girls just keep saying, go faster. This is not fast enough. Well, I hope we have enough gas to get back. I'm just glad we're not traveling tomorrow because <laughs> I may not be able to walk. <laughs> we spoke too soon. We're at the break point. So we get to rest our, our gas pedalers. Hey, we pedaled the way here. The girls can get us home, right? Y'all hear that? Y'all gonna pedal back home, right? Oh, now they act like they're asleep now. <laughs> they don't hear nothing. <laughs> We're at the halfway point and there is the bridge we drove over to get here. Right over there. It looks close on camera, but I think it's pretty far away. And there is the bay. What do you think about that little train ride? Was that fun? Huh? What about that? Was that fun too? Come on, talk to us. Tell us, tell us a story. Yeah, it was fun. I had a great time. Can't wait to get back on and do it again. Was it fun? Yeah. You wanna yeah. do it again? And you wanna talk to him again? What are you gonna say? <laughs>
Wagner. <laughs> it was fun though. A little pricey, but I think it's worth it. Yeah, so what was the price overall? Tell them. $198 for a four seater. But today's Sunday. Tomorrow that same thing is $178. Okay, so you pay per, per, per car. Per, per car. Person. You don't have so oh. if you come by yourself, you're paying for the, the two seater. Oh, okay. Okay, that's good to know. So And if you have three people, you're paying for a four seater. Okay. Well when you divide two hundred dollars divided by a four seater, that's not too bad. And he doesn't he doesn't yeah, cost, he really but count. as long as you have to you have to wear them on yeah, that. You have to have a baby carrier for an infant because they can't get strapped in. So uh, the girls loved it. Caden even liked it until the wind on the last part. And he was a little over it, but hey, yeah. I would do this again. You know what I'm thinking? What? I'm thinking we're like 45 minutes from home and we're gonna be hungry soon. Daddy wants to go get oysters. That's I right. know what's coming. We got it. We gotta find out if we gotta find out if the Rhode Island oysters are any I, different than the Connecticut oysters. I think I'm ready to try a lobster roll. Oh. I think we're close enough to Maine that well, you we to, should try one. We haven't tried one yet. You have to try one here so that way you know when you get right, there it's the best I one i want to try one outside of maine and then one in maine so maybe we'll try one of those you will not believe the roads alicia just made me drive down trying to find <laughs> the restaurant oh yeah oh yeah okay i get it i get it it needs some government juice we're in newport rhode island the dually shouldn't be here i don't think regular cars should be here either i don't fit in the parking spots there's one ways everywhere and some of them a honda civic wouldn't make it it's true the worst part is we were sitting in this parking lot about 30 minutes ago when we thought we knew where we wanted to eat but then i thought i found something better that was what like 0.4 miles away 0.2 <laughs> so we drove a really long way to get there because we can't fit down the streets where we needed to turn oh i'll show them on the map yeah so we're right here and we need to be on this road right here and all these are one ways. I had to go like three miles that way to come back to go right here. And guess what? When we got over there, there was no parking. Like you're, you're not fitting anywhere over there. So we came back to this little lot here because it's nice Look. and empty. It's got big spots. I found a guy with the truck. I mean, it's yes. not really big spots. We don't fit in this spot. Well, we fit enough. It's not crowded <laughs> and we're not on the street. So we're back to where we started and we're going to go get something to eat. I don't know that we'll get a lobster roll this time, but we may, we may. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's on the menu. This is why I'm I came here. I'm not getting a lobster salad roll because I don't feel like that's the same thing. Y'all let me know. Am I wrong? I'm going to ask the waitress, but you can still let me know. All right, so we settled on the red parrot. And if we don't like that one, we go right here to the oyster bar. So one of these is going to feed us. I think they're both going to be good. red parrot what do we start with it was the steamer so it had the mussels and the clamshells in it all with like a lemon herb butter sauce with capers and tomatoes you know you just said that like you were trying to sell it to me well a lemon herb butter sauce with capers did i sell it to you i think i did i told him to get it over oysters never had it before and i was like i'm not so sure i want to eat this and uh didn't know I liked it. <laughs> it's excellent. There's nothing better than fresh seafood. Okay, so we had a lobster-ish roll, I feel like. We didn't have a true lobster roll. We had lobster salad inside of our roll. So it wasn't just lobster. And she said, normally, tell us if we're wrong, lobster rolls are served either hot or cold with like a lemon herb butter sauce. These were served cold with like a mayonnaise I don't know, spread. It was like chicken Kinda, salad with lobster. Yeah, chicken salad, but with lobster. Um, it, it had lettuce on the bun. So I don't, and it was served cold. So I don't know if we had a true lobster roll, but it was still delicious, I think. Super delicious. Yeah, and the coleslaw was excellent. What did y'all end it with? <laughs> Bad choices, as always. <laughs> what the problem is, is we always have the kids' meal come out with our appetizers. So by the time we get our meal, they're done eating. And so to, 
to appease them, they get dessert. They get dessert. But we bring four spoons because Caden and I want to partake also. So we had the fudge brownie on the bottom with two ice cream scoops and chocolate on top and walnuts and whipped cream. All the good things. Good first experience. But I have a feeling our main lobster roll, the true one. I want to try a warm one next. Good news is we still have uh, Massachusetts to try the lobster roll. And we have New Hampshire. And then we're finally in Maine. Yeah. We have three more chances to get this right. I bet New Hampshire has an awesome one. We're heading back to the RV. This video is probably not over. If it is, you'll hear the music. Most likely, we're gonna hang out at the RV park and watch it rain for a few days. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a tour of the place and then uh, we'll be getting out of here. So, see you guys tomorrow, or the next day, or the next, but I'm coming back at you. It's been a few days since our rail car experience, and this is pretty much what it's been like since then. It's been raining, and it's been really cold, and when it's not raining and cold, the haze from the Canadian wildfire shows up. So today it's raining, so it's actually a lot clearer today than it has been. But this is what it's been like ever since we got here. We had one day that was great. We took you on that adventure. It really wasn't beautiful out, but it wasn't raining. It's rained every single day at some point since we've been here. Since today is our last day, I'm gonna give you a tour of our RV park. So we had to choose between 50 amp and no sewer and 30 amp with sewer. So this right here, this whole section, these are all 50 amps. That is all 30 amps with sewer. And we decided since it was going to be June when we were here that it might be hot. We'd rather have ACs running than sewer. Turns out we could have gone 30 amp. Hasn't got above 65. So we have 50 amp here, no sewer, and the water pressure is <clears throat> I actually bypassed the water filter. It's still <clears throat> So I went ahead and just filled my freshwater tanks. Been using the onboard pump for water. We got dumped one day. Charged you $25 to dump. Plenty of room for our truck and our camper. I wish that was concrete as well because with the rain and this little pea gravel right here, it just tracks everywhere. Everyone over here and everyone kind of like right there, those are the travelers. Everyone back there are the seasonal guests that their RV stay here full time. The front yard is pretty big. Nice little concrete patio, picnic table, fire pit. Nice area. Plenty of space between the campers. And we're right here in front of the playground. This looks familiar. I feel like I've been giving you guys a lot of tours from the truck when it's raining. Because it actually does rain quite a bit up here in the northeast. So here is the playground. And one of the reasons I chose this site that we have is because I'm across from the playground. So the kids have had a great time at that playground. And right next to it is a basketball court. We don't actually play basketball, but there's been several kids who are basketballs and the girls have enjoyed playing but well their version of basketball next to the basketball courts basketball courts right there is this splash pad this splash pad is actually open they are actually in full season right now but not really so they're open and in season but it's gonna be two more weeks before they're actually fully open that's because almost all their employees are high school kids and because of that they don't get out of school until the middle of june so yes the pools the splash pad, the water slide, they opened up before we got here. They opened up on Memorial Day, but really it's the third week in June when everything is actually open, open. So the pool and the splash pad are open every single day. The pool is really nice. So here's the pool, really nice. Also extremely cold. We got into it two days while we were here. The kids, it's so cold, the kids thought it was cold and the kids never think anything is cold. Right here, this building next to the pool is the showers where Alicia comes to shower so we can conserve water. Not bad, they charge you 25 cents for six minutes of shower. Alicia usually uses about a dollar every time she showers. She says it's not great because the water pressure here is also not amazing. But right behind the shower house is the water slide. This thing right here was only open one day while we were here. And on that day, it rained, so it was closed that day. There was a field trip on Thursday that came and it was open for two hours that day. And we managed to get Ashland to try it one time. The pool splash pad open all the time right now. This is only open on Saturdays for three hours a day until the third week of June when all their employees get out of school and then it'll be open seven days a week. Right next to the water slide is putt-putt. This has the same rules as that. So right now, this is all locked up because there's an employee that works there. 100% free to play, but they wanna keep it looking good so they have someone that's kind of a chaperone here. When they are open, they're really open. They run extremely late hours. Like the office stays open here, I think until nine every day and 11 on the weekdays. Right next to the water slide and the putt-putt 
is this pretty awesome fishing pond. So our RV is right back there and this is the start of the seasonal sites. And you can see people are starting to show up and get their RVs and sites ready for the season. It started really the first week and we were here. When we came in, there was a whole lot of people coming in without RVs. And then when we got here, we realized this is a huge section. Like it's, there's a lot of people, this is their seasonal sites. And most of them are really nice. Most of them have little decks and pergolas and barbecue pits. It's, uh, it's done really nice up here. And they didn't really pack them in like some of the places we've seen. Like there's a lot of space even back here in the seasonals between the campsites. We actually didn't know this existed until a few days ago, but back here in the seasonal site, because it's not on the map, there's a baseball field and right over there behind the baseball field is a dog park. In the very back of the seasonals, I'm not sure what this building is. I think it's a recreational area. They have pavilion on the side, but I've looked through the windows. It looks like a place for for activities and crafts and things like that when they are happening. Right now it's all closed up. There's nothing going on. This is also where the dumpsters are, way back here in the back out of the way. I actually had to look it on the map of where to find them. And back here in the back is wide open fields. So all that is wide open fields. I believe it's for tent camping. Over there is a whole bunch of cornholes. They have horseshoes, bocce ball, volleyball, all kinds of things to do back here in the very back. And the owner actually told me yesterday when the field trip was here that normally they do like these huge field trips where this whole area back here will be filled with buses and they'll have all kinds of like field day activities. So they're either at the water park or they're back here in the back doing those kind of things, which says all summer long, it's full of like school bus loads of kids having a great time here. This place, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's a, uh, when I got here, I told Alicia, it reminded me of a place we like to camp back at home near Toledo Bend Lake. It's up here in the woods. Everyone has their spots. Like, look at this. This is pretty awesome. And these are the seasonal sites. So they are a little bit more decorated, but they're not decorated with stuff, if you know what I mean. They're decorated with camping stuff. You know, they got chairs, they got little patios, they got fire pits. They do it, they do it pretty good here. Here is the other end of the travelers so right here you can see there's no one here there's some passer throughs right here and everything up there is also people passing through if you're wondering where my rv is so right over there basically on the other side of those woods is where my rv is and there's the pool right there so all this area between my rv and there is also travelers and you can see there's not a lot of us here that are traveling through so they said it really doesn't take off until the middle of june up here to where people start traveling I'm gonna drive out the exit and I'm gonna show you the one thing that was challenging, it's getting in here. So that tree right there and all these overhangs coming in right here through the entrance. If you have any fifth wheel, not just a big rig, if you have a fifth wheel, you're gonna hit tree branches coming in. The road in is the same way. It's pretty good up until you get about a mile away and then it's uh, you have to stop, let cars pass, get on the wrong side of the road, avoid hitting as many branches as possible. They're not big branches, they're just the low hangers with the leaves on them, but you're gonna hit them getting in and out of this place. So this is the laundry slash store. So there is the store and right behind it is the pond I showed you. So when I was standing by the mini golf showing you the pond, this building was behind it. We've left the park and we came back in. It's a separate entrance. Well, there's two, but you have to be out of the park to get here. So that's the way out over there, but there's a gate and there's another trash and a dump station. This is how they want you to leave. But you can also leave through the main entrance, but the only way to get to the store and the laundry is to actually be outside the park. Laundry's pretty awesome. They got six machines. It's affordable. It's like, I think 225 for each one for a wash and then 225 for a dry, about normal price. We had to use it all week because like again, we didn't have sewer, so we had to manage our water. The store, I don't know anything about because it has the same schedule and hours as the water slide and the putt-putt golf. It has been closed the entire time I've been here. It does look like it's got a lot of awesome things inside of it. It's got a restaurant where they'll serve you food and actually bring it to your RV if you order it. It's got all kinds of RV accessories and things to make repairs. It's a pretty good store. It's actually a really big store. They sell ice and firewood. And right behind the firewood thing is the main entrance. We're actually gonna head over there right now and see about paying for a late checkout because the place we're going today won't let us check in until three and it's only 70 miles away. I think I forgot to mention, you can fill your propane tanks here as well. We're good to go. I paid a $20 fee. I can stay up until 2.30 because check-in is three for the next round of RVs coming in. 
there's no one coming in and because it's raining she said i understand you can take your time what did we pay to stay here we paid 70 dollars a night we stayed seven nights we got a weekly discount because we did stay seven nights and i think it's the perfect price for this type of place we had it to ourselves which is awesome but it was also awesome whenever there was a bunch of kids here because they have an amazing playground they have a splash pad they have a pool and a water slide they have fishing pond putt putt golf they have all kinds of activities and that's the price even during the summer whenever the workers show up and everything is open all the time so if we were here in two more weeks and this place was fully packed this would be an amazing place to come especially if you have kids it's really geared towards kids really nice park it's in an area called richmond rhode island which isn't far from newport or Providence. well let's be honest anywhere in rhode island isn't far from anywhere else in rhode island i think the i-95 only runs like 40 miles through the entire state and that's diagonally through the entire state very small state you can get anywhere really quickly we went to newport our providence area and it was like a 40 minute drive really nice area rhode island was pretty cool we would have loved to do more things all it's done is rain and the one time it didn't rain we tried to enjoy the outside as much as we can before the rain came back again and that brings me to today so it's 9 30. we don't have to check out until two now i have to go wake everybody up we're gonna pack this entire rv up and we're gonna take a small little drive down the road to boston massachusetts area we'll be a little south of boston in a town called carver but we have a 79 mile drive today about an hour and a half and you guys stay tuned because at our next spot we're having some guests come visit us from texas the girls have no idea who's coming but they're going to really enjoy who shows up at the next park see y'all later